to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. Over these many, many years, working with interior designers, both through Window Works and the podcast now, I have met a lot of go-getters, a lot of you that are just smart and driven and motivated, but still struggle to get it all done, right? It's a thing, and I get it. And it is often one of the reasons why I recommend outsourcing. Because as soon as we can free up some of the time that those low level tasks create and need and require, then we can focus on the higher level things that make the actual differences in our businesses, right? That push that needle forward, that impact. But outsourcing comes with its own set of headaches. I know, right? The thinking about who to hire, onboarding them, explaining them how, how you do what you do. I mean, just think about it. You know, I'm not have to tell you guys explaining the details in an interior design project. Like it's insanity, right? Then you still have to find the person that's a right fit. It's a lot. And I have to say, I think sometimes we might say it's the expense, the money that puts us off from doing this. But I think it's also just imagining this workload, this task of figuring it out, all, it all out, having it make sense, and then finding the person. Well, My guests today, Shayna Polino and Evelyn Roberts, who are the creators of 4D Biz, understand this very well, and they have the answer for us. 4D Biz is essentially a virtual team for interior design businesses, right? Including the whole thing, providing the strategy, the marketing, the admin, and even design support for your business at whatever level that might look like. So, I'm excited to have Evelyn and Shayna explain their business model to you. And I just want to say before we get into the show that registration for Luann University classes is going to be opening up later in November 2023. Okay, the courses will run in Q1 of 2024. And as of this very moment, I am planning to only run one semester all year. So if you've previously been aware that we've been running in the spring and the fall, And you think to yourself, oh, this semester I'll take that class, next semester I'll take that class. We're going to, right now, I am planning just to run in the winter semester because I want to spend more time putting towards Luann University and other endeavors, okay? But I am passionately committed to Luann University. I know this is the place where you can get the education that you cannot get anywhere else on the business side, on locking it down. Business tactics, strategies, principles, specifically for the interior design industry. All right. So if you've been waiting to take a LUU course and you are ready to up-level your business, stay tuned for in a couple of weeks when we open the cart for registration. Okay. All right. Let's hear what Evelyn and Shayna have to say. Hey, Shayna. Hey, Evelyn. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hey, Luann. Thanks. This is Shayna. So happy to be here. Hi, Luann. This is Evelyn. We are so stoked to be a part of your podcast. That's awesome. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm interested in picking your business apart. As you know, I've been grilling you pre-air. <laughs> and so I think I'm ready. I think I got a handle on it and I'm ready to help, you know, spread the word uh, to our colleagues listening. So here's the thing. This business, 4D Biz, is, is an outgrowth is a brainchild, is an idea out of your own interior design firm, Shana, Shana Rose Interiors. So I think that the most effective thing for us to do is to start there. Tell us a little bit about 
how come you were running a successful interior design firm and just had to start another business on the side? Yeah. So, um, Shana here, guys. So, um, I was your classic accidental business owner. Um, I never thought that I would run a business ever um, until I was working in an interior design firm that didn't value me. I wasn't seeking the growth I wanted to. I had all these creative ideas that went nowhere. Um, so I took the plunge very, very young, um, went off on my own, created what I thought my version of a business proposal was to some clients I had been working with in New York City from the Hamptons and made my salary in the first three months, killing it. Um, I made six figures in the first year. Um, I d- didn't come from much. I had a $14 a day budget just to be able to take that grease trip. Um, and a year and two months into running my business, I flew off my snowmobile at 45 miles an hour, hit a tree, um, got airlifted oh off site, broke my pelvis, um, you know, everything that you never think is going to happen in your business. Um, I was installing my own drapery at the time, and I was doing every type of thing I could possibly do for the business <laughs> to take that profit. Um And, you know, there I was in bed in a four floor walk up in Manhattan, not able to move. Like, how am I going to pay my bills? Thankfully, um, I had six figures of profit sitting in the bank account. And um, boy, did I spend that very quickly, (laughs) uh, making a lot of um, failing upwards, I like to say. You know, we learn Hmm. from every failure. Um, that we have. And I think there's something to take out of every experience. Um, But the very first thing I did was I hired a business coach and it was an $1,100 monthly commitment. Um, She wasn't specialized in my industry. Um, That was one of my biggest mistakes. Um, But I think emotionally I needed her. I was just depressed and and I needed someone kind of spiritual like her. Um, But Then the next thing that happened was, you know, she's like, you need a virtual ops team. I was like, okay, that sounds good. Um, You know, what they were doing, I'm not really sure. It was another, you know, $1,400 monthly commitment. I don't know what that converted into time. Um, They kind of fueled my ideas instead of kind of holding me back. I mean, I spent $6,000 on a brochure. It won an award, but who needs a $6,000 brochure? Um, I developed a bedline, had this massive launch event in a bar in New York City, bringing all these beds in. It's going to be massive. Like, like we didn't even sell one bed at the event. Like it was just crazy. Um, so a year kind of goes by and I am looking at my bank account and I'm like, this has to stop. You know, this is just crazy. They just kept, we did a, oh, embarrassing. We did a commercial advertisement in (laughs) my tiny, (laughs) it's, it's comical, very embarrassing, but I'd almost release it just for the laughs. Like it was (laughs) insane what these people just like, we're on like cheering me on to do and spend my I money. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Oh so I let them go. I'm like, wow, that was not good. And um, the next thing I went into uh, was an intern. I had a v- very tenacious girl pop into my company's Instagram inbox. I was like, wow, this is great. This feels like me. She was like, I've been following you. I'm like, awesome. Um, so I hire her and she's coming to um, my apartment, you know, part time. Um, and I thought that was going to be really great, but I really needed someone experienced. I mean, I was barely walking. Um, it just wasn't a great fit. There was too much of a learning curve to, to have there. Um, the next move I made um, was trying to hire someone who recently graduated college. Um, again, very tenacious, um, but she just didn't have all the strengths that I needed. And certain tasks that I felt should have only taken an hour and a half, like four days would go by and I would view her progress. Like, this is nuts. You know, this is crazy. Um, but again, everyone has strengths and weaknesses. So it's not fair for me to expect that she was going to be an expert in all the avenues, but it just wasn't the right commitment for my business. Um, so let that go. And I'm just looking at everything. I'm searching for technology. I'm a sucker for a sale and a discount, buying everything up front in advance. Oh, 20% off Salesforce. Yeah, I need that. I'll get that. 
um, couldn't find technology to help me. It was just more frustrating than it was worth. No human support. Um, and then I had gone to Evelyn a few times, you know, I think I asked her two or three times, like, will you come, you know, come help me in the business? And she always wasn't ready. She was doing her own thing. And I remember kind of the last time I asked her, I'm like, I'm not going to ask her again. Like, this is embarrassing. I'm not asking her again. (laughs) She will come to me when she is ready. And that's kind of exactly what the timing um, provided us. You know, Evelyn had come to me in this time where I was again, kind of by myself. I was back on my feet, but it was extremely painful to walk. Um, and she was freelancing the marketing side for me. I mean, to get consistent, consistent copywriting, social media out. I mean, what takes me three hours? I rewrite one sentence like four times. Evelyn's like flying through like 30 minutes. It's done. It sounds like me. I'm like, wow, this is great. Um, so she came in and first kind of started there, helped me build out my website, Um, And then I had already started developing a technology that was actually initially um, developed just for Shana Rose Interiors as a sales tool for myself. It was a virtual workroom that streamlined being able to calculate yardage, um, calculate widths and price and everything that Shana Rose Interiors kind of specialized around that high-end custom world. Um, So she came in and started helping me on the website development there. Um, That also failed. You know, I asking other designers to do more work than they what what they were used to. So this technology has also failed upwards. Um, but so Evelyn comes in and we kind of start investigating and we're talking about all the things that I hated about hiring. Um, and that's what we did. We developed a team. We developed a technology around everything that frustrated me um, and developed a system of procedure that works for the interior design business, for the novice or the solo or even the expert um, interior design company to come in and get the level of support that they need. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. So much there. You want <laughs> yeah. to add something? I Evelyn would. I would love start? to just quickly <laughs> chime in. This is Evelyn. I'm here too. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but what I, <laughs> what I think now that we're far enough away from the broken pelvis that we can joke about it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I always like to say it is so Shana that she had to learn the lesson, the absolute hardest way, most painful way possible that alone is not a sustainable way to run and much less grow a company. Um, So sucks that she had to learn it the way that she had to learn it. But, uh, you know, for this industry now, what we're trying to do is create all of those solutions that could have made it possible for her faster to get all of that support that she needed. And that is that is truly where 4D Biz came from. I joined Shana Rose Interiors as that first fractional quote unquote, what does that even mean? Super flexible employee. Um, and then we kind of looked at each other and thought, well, this is the model that that works. Let's build it out and and make it accessible. So, okay. So it's crazy because in what you just said, Evelyn, is interesting in relation to all the things that Shana shared about her you know, having to do it the the most difficult way in order to see it. It's like, you know, the universe is sending you messages. I'm sure, you know, the two of you, it sounds like have talked about it. And prior to this catastrophic accident, you probably were getting universe messages. And just like, I got this. I could do this. I could do this. I'm, I All alone is great. All alone is fine. And it's like, okay, so let's just try it all alone. Like you're really, really going to push me to make you see this. Right. And I know the universe does that. It sends us messages. And it, what the thing is where it ties in for me also is because there's a huge lesson in, and I'm going to get to how 4D biz eventually is structured and helps designers. Don't get me wrong. But I I can't go by that lesson, Shana, the second lesson. So the first lesson is I can do it all. Unless I can't, I can't walk and talk and, you know, <laughs> wipe my own, you know what, right? <laughs> right? Then I can't maybe do it all or any of it, right? But the thing is, the second lesson was... You know, we always say it takes a community, that you have to have the people around you, right? This is what you're saying. But it also has to be the right people. Like, like, and those those people that let you, letting you build a $6,000 brochure, right? And then, like, let's have a 
bed launch in a bar. Like, how about that? Like, just just those two things are just so inconsistent. It's like, I don't even know if the world needs another brand new bed business, but I don't know that it, if it does, it's not launching in a bar, right? <laughs> like, 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 what is that? Right? It's like, like, you guys got to watch this on YouTube because Shane is like hysterically laughing at herself, <laughs> hearing how, how ridiculous it is, right? But the thing is, like, what I wrote when you were talking and telling that story, the the note I wrote to myself was, she was paying for quote unquote experts around her, but she, all she got was yes men. Right. Ugh. So like when I think of the people that surround me, they're all going to be listening to this interview at some point and they're going to be cracking up <laughs> because like I am, you know, idea launch fast, let's go. Right. But like, you need the people that are like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? Yeah. You know, and like, I, the thing is, let me just say the thing is what I, they're always saying to me is great. Why? Mm -hmm. Great. What's in it for everybody? Love that. Like, what are you getting out of it? What are your listeners getting out of it? What are your potential, you know, clients getting out of it? Like, okay, but why, you know? And so even just one, why are we launching a bed in a bar might have avoided something. <laughs> so many things, Luann. Yeah. There are so <laughs> many things that should have been said to me. You know, it's, well, you know what? And the thing is, like, we are the visionaries. We're wild stallions. We're wild stallions. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many. I mean, you know, you recognize each other a mile away. The Evelyns, we recognize a mile away, too. We're like, yep, take two of you and come with me, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, we need you. But the thing is, a wild stallion without an Evelyn is a train wreck. Well, and that's what we've kind of created our own metaphor for this one. Evelyn here. Um we always say that Shayna goes to the moon. She gets out every single big idea. She goes to the moon. She can't help it. She's a chronic problem solver. She has a pro you know, she, has, she's addicted I have a to that entrepreneurial yeah. spirit, um, which I love and I would never try to shut down. But then we say that I build the ladder, the little tiny yes. steps, the how to get there, the execution, the nitty gritty drives her nuts and now has shut down all the next solutions that she would have otherwise right. been thinking of so go to the moon but how are you going to get there you know you have to have someone around you to build the ladder too do you know three hours ago i said that to one of our employees at window works vinnie wasn't in the office and i don't know what got us talking on a particular conversation Catherine and I, and I just said to her, and Catherine's worked for us for about, well, I don't even own window works anymore. My son-in-law, my daughter do, but I mean, it's, it feels like, you know, it was 40 years. feels like mine, right? <laughs> but, and I'm there every day still. So doing things and helping out. But the thing is, I said to her, I had this, you know, like what the, like we were talking about the contrast of me and Vin, I think. And I said to her, I said, here's who we are. And it's funny, you like go to the moon and build a ladder. And literally what I said is we're both standing on the street and I see the destination 15 miles out. And I'm just like, okay, engine started, <laughs> let's go. And he's like, wait, first turn is this, sir. third turn is that, set fourth turn. And I'm like, right, but we're just on our way, right? Like, <laughs> let's just go. Yeah, yeah. Shana here, um, I usually tell our clients, you know, me and Evelyn are like a black and white cookie because we just think yes. totally different. And if you guys are on YouTube, when we went to go order these headsets, we didn't talk to each other, nothing, but I ordered black and she ordered white. It always cracks us up. Like we are just completely, we just make up each other and complete such a whole um, dynamic, which, yeah. you know, is important. You know, it's important it to have that right executive team that can make up that whole cookie and you don't have someone overstepping, um, on, on strengths, you know, you're, we're all yeah. strength. We're all strong in our own way. I talk to the team about this all the time. It's really good to be able to identify those weaknesses. I'm not saying you can't build on a weakness and make it strong, right. but right. there's only so much time in a day. And, and why waste your right. time? I was like, just gonna like, say. like I'm going to be a major league baseball player, but let me work every day on throwing a football. Right. I don't know. And I could Shana... sign a contract today for baseball, but <laughs> right. Exactly. right. Exactly. And when Shana really puts her time to it and writes something I'll always be like Shayna that was great like super well done not the best use of your time I could have done that in 
one Half fifth the <laughs> of the time that you spent. T- great job. You know, like it's not as though we can't all have multiple strengths, but right. we always talk about it as staying in our lanes. Like where yes. is our lanes where we're, you know, rocking the strongest. And if we yes. can stay there, then everybody's happy, feeling fulfilled, feeling appreciated, feeling successful. Right. What right. Else can and you it's ask so true. the most efficient use of time, you know, and that's yeah. where we've had designers come on with employees um, and our, with our technology, you, you can visually see the time logs down to the point oh one decimal. You know, you see that time tracking. We've actually had clients let go of employees on high salaries because the level of efficiency was so strong. Yes, maybe on a fractional support on an hourly perspective, you feel like you're paying more, but the level of expertise, quality, speed, s- completely um, surpassed their own in-house team. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And seeing those time logs was so important to Shayna because of how she failed upwards, that virtual ops team, what she was paying for the end of a week, what got done? Like, where did my right. money go? All of the features that we've built into this, both the technology features on the technology side and the features of working with our team, how we train our team to work came out of the level of control that Shana really wanted and was lacking or the, you know, solution she was looking for and couldn't find out there. So it is, has all been done very intentionally, I would say. Mm. So, so that does bring us to actually 4D biz, right? And what it does. So 4D biz answers all this insanity and craziness that you went through, Shana, and having, you know, virtual outside consultants that really didn't have your back and really were just like, oh, let's do a brochure. Like, and they're, and the thing is, I'm sure the company that executed and did the brochure with you, they probably at the end, if you would ever have, would have called them out and said, this was bull crap. Why did I do? They'd be like, well, you asked for it. That's why we did it. Like, that's what we're here for. Right. That's what you hired us to do. Like they weren't thinking about do you even need one? Like, you know, it's like, you know, when we go to McDonald's and we ask for a Happy Meal, they're like, are you sure you really want that Happy Meal today, Lou? <laughs> like, right? Yeah. No one's going to say you no to business. Grab- like, yep, well, this- great. Yeah. She's right on board. Six grand? It- Awesome. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so the thing is, though, that so whether it's hiring the wrong outside and outside consultants, that in my opinion, I think the gap with that is they didn't have the big picture view. They had a slice view of brochure required, brochure delivered, not of whether it's needed, necessary, what's the ROI, blah, blah, blah. Next thing was the the entry level intern and finding out that that's awesome. But by the time I tell you 16,000 things, nothing got done. And then the new graduate and the new graduate as effective and, and as initiative and all of the things, just not the seasonness in order to be able to step in your place and do some of the higher level things with your clients. And so it sorry, the you- one thing I would add about that new graduate often needs a certain number of hours per week to make the job work for them. Yes, Fair enough. Right. We want to provide, we want sure. you to be able yeah, to pay they, your rent, but yeah. not always a perfect fit for the business in that way. Exactly. Good point. So this brings you to the invention of 4D biz. Like you, Evelyn comes on, you're working with her fractionally in marketing, and then you realize this is working. So now 4D biz, you now are covering three or four different major areas for a design business, four major areas for an interior design business. And you, which one of you wants to run me through the four areas? So I'm listening. I'm like, oh my God, I've been Shana. I've been this. I've been that. I tried that. Like, what is it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Evelyn. You go. Sorry about that. Um, So I'll take this one. We have built out the fractional business model to really include four distinct teams. But remember that all of these teams are integrated together because 4D Biz is one entity. You're still working with four teams that can communicate and collaborate and understand your business. So I think that's an important thing to start with. But to answer your questions more specifically, the four divisions are business operations and business development. That's really Shana as that fractional COO, that fractional chief operating officer. High level strategy around how your business is operating, your profitability, your design process. Shana yeah, I'm going to jump in on that too. Um, that kind of fractional COO goes in two different ways. I hate using 
the word coach, and that's kind of why we say fractional COO. Um, there is that coaching kind of strategy element, but there's also an execution element to it. Some people, and I always advocate, you know, they really on average, if they just need coaching and foundation and structure of how to price the job accurately, how to protect themselves appropriately, we bust through that in about five hours. We have a structure that we create from them. I'm on a screen share. I'm creating that pricing foundation for them. Um, and that ongoing fractional COO support is only for someone who wants to integrate me consistently to the business. For example, I'm actually taking clients closing calls. Um, we had a client, Tiffany, that came in and within a six-week period, I cr we created that pricing structure together and I closed closed for her $67,000 worth of business. Um, there's just that psychological element when you show a client that you have a team and it's collaborative and just like me and Evelyn, that black and white cookie, right? Here's your design and creative head. They go and take the on-site meeting. They pitch the design. They pitch the concept. And then my seat, my fractional, well, they don't say fractional, but my COO is now going to get on a call with you and walk through the contract, walk through the pricing structure. Don't send out this massive retainer without the client fully understanding what deliverables they're going to get. Um, and that's where I kind of step in. And then of course, in addition, when the company is growing and we have a big team or a lot of projects working at runs, um, helping schedule the workflow, sometimes getting integrated with client budgets and that communication. Um, so it's as low as I need help and I need support of just getting started or as far as my business is crazy. I need someone um, just as strong as me, but integrated um, on the financial and structure standpoint to my business. Okay. And the one thing I just want to make sure I heard correctly in there, when you're working, so this would, we're not, don't get me into the weeds in it, but I'm just going to make an assumption that if I've hired 4D design, 4D biz and one of those elements I've hired is you as the COO, a fractional COO. An opportunity within that is when I feel like I'm over my head or it's not my superpower to do that negotiation, that conversation, I just introduce you as the COO of my company. And, you know, you met me and I did the fancy, you know, design and all the things are happy, but here comes the big guns to close the thing down. <laughs> exactly. <like> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we don't want their clients knowing 4D biz. We talk about this all the time and Evelyn right. will get into the administrative services and the other teams. Um, but, you know, we are administrators when they're integrated, they get their own email with the domain of that person's company. Our employees and our team is to be thought of as your team, as a designer. It's, there's no difference. We have a standard of system of procedures, but in that onboarding process, in that marriage period, it's, I always, I always tell the designer, it's your way. It's not our way. If you don't have a way and you don't have a system of procedure, which is essential to operate your business, then I'm going to help you and give you a foundation and tell you what works for us. But you can break it. Um, and that's totally fine. And they are to act as your employees. So Eva, I'll let you kind of get into the, the other divisions. Yeah. But um, on that business development, the operation side, like we said about staying in our lanes, problem solving, sales, this is Shana's lane, bring her on. There's nobody better to do it. Right. Um, team number two, uh, well, they're not numbered. No one goes above or before <laughs> the other, but the second team I'll talk about is marketing. Um, and that's kind of a spectrum because I myself can work as that fractional CMO, that fractional chief marketing officer for designers who really just want to talk marketing strategy high level. Maybe they're still at a do it myself kind of place, but they want some guidance. Where is my time best spent? Um, let's talk about goals. You know, how am I tracking my conversions? Uh, we can do that on a consulting level. And then we also have our team of marketing assistants. So if you want to really get some ongoing support, content creation and done for you execution, we can help in that way as well. And, you know, both either or, you know, together. Okay. That's interesting. So, and, and the thing is, they're two very different things. So if I come to you and I just want to point out, if you are not a well built out team now, Thinking, if you don't 
have the overall marketing strategy clarified in your mind and thinking you're going to hire somebody to just execute. It's like, you know, renting a car and not having the map to where you're going. <laughs> like you absolutely can't just say, hey, I'm not really ready for a CMO yet, but just like do my marketing. It's like, right? I, you know, like I, I, I have a car and I want a car and I want to get somewhere, but I don't know where it is I'm going. Like, like, and I don't know that you know that. I don't really know that you know that until you've been in business a, a minute or two mm -hmm. before you realize that there is a very... Um, clear distinction between the vision and the strategy of the, your marketing and the execution of it. Absolutely. We've, you know, gone through the pains of that realization here at Louis Nigera Inc. over the last couple of years. Right. And Truly. a lot of designers yeah. have been burned before too, um, because yeah. they were approached by that classic marketing agency that do not understand this industry at all. Interior design yeah. is a very different business to market. It's not like selling a product or a low right. level ticket service um, where you can put it in front of a buyer at any given time and they're ready to make a buying decision, you know? So it's, it's just a totally different game. Um, and a lot of interior designers have worked with marketing specialists that are not interior design specific right. and have a bad taste in their mouth. And so that's another, um, another important point to make. And so if I've not, if it's news to me that the vision and strategy for marketing is not the same as like, just get on, you know, Instagram three times a week, right? Um, you can have a vision for Instagram, but that's not your marketing. That's not your marketing strategy. So is it an available option to say, do a one-off contract, whatever the agreement would be? I don't need the details on it. Um, with you as the CMO and say, okay, here's the strategy. Here's like with, with, with consultation with, you know, like Shana was talking about going through on the thing. And then I can take it back because I've got a team and they can execute. Or then I can say, okay, now like you guys take it and your, your, your execution team takes over, or you only get to do the work with you as a strategist, as a CMO, if we're going to work with you on the execution. No, absolutely not. I'm okay. available to you as that CMO, whether or not you plan to use our marketing team. Um, okay. And so we're going to talk, I'm sure it'll come to, you know, onboarding, getting started. Um, so I would meet with that designer. We would go through what their current marketing strategy looks like, what their brand is now, you know, that can definitely evolve as it becomes more strategic, all their messaging, their unique selling propositions. We're going to download all of that. And then I will send you, here's what my marketing plan would look like for you take that, run with it, go, come back, you know, come back to me when it starts to work. You're too busy. You need help. Um, so there is no, you know, commitment to then work with our team on an ongoing basis. Yeah. I think there's a good example of this, of a recent client who came in, had an employee that was operating 20 hours a week. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ev, but um, I think about 15 to 20 hours of that time was going to social media. I mean, it was like shocking when I was working on the operations side of things and we were kind of uncovering how her employees were working and what those time commitments looked like. And I was like, yikes, okay, I need you to go to Evelyn next because we're going to put those 20 hours to a better use of time. Um, you know, those social media platforms are those live portfolios. They are not... Um, business generators. I mean, I've met a couple <laughs> designers who, okay, certainly they're high influencers. They're on there. Um, they're constantly on video, but they came to me with struggles that they didn't get the clients that they wanted. They weren't the high paying clients. They were always getting taken advantage of for those free pieces of advice. And that's just kind of where we are as a society and, and the age bracket, average age bracket that's on those platforms. But absolutely, when people get referred to your business or they're talking about their business, they're definitely going to go take a peek at it and they're going to see what right. you're up to um, as as right. I said, as a portfolio, but that's all it is, in my opinion. And other people might battle yeah. me on that, but that's how I feel about it. For many, well, for many yeah. interior design business in this, businesses in this industry, that's true. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, I know, for example, I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys know Darla Powell from Wingnut Social, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I know 
Darla. Like, I, we're friends. I know that she has helped interior designers through either their Done For You agency or for their Instagram for interior designers, um, you know, download course. Create Instagram that does create clients. It's not not possible. Mm -hmm. It's just not like have an Instagram, get clients. <laughs> like right. like that's what it is. Like it's like, and I would say if there's, you know, 10,000 designers on Instagram, you know, maybe 800 are actually getting clients from Instagram. And by the way, which 800 are those? They're the ones that we all talk to on the podcast. So it seems like everybody is because, you know, all the ones that aren't don't like do a submission form. Can I be on your podcast and tell everybody how I haven't gotten one client in the last 10 years on Instagram? <laughs> I'm like, no. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. And I just think, so too, I it, hear you. It Shane. comes yeah. down yeah. to your goals and the level of time that you're willing to invest. Like, is that the best place for you to be spending the majority of the time that you're willing to put to marketing? Maybe, right. very probably not, you know? Yeah. And, right. and so that's kind of that level of strategy too. you yeah. know, where, where is your time or your investment going to go if you're doing it yourself or if you're delegating it? Yeah, I was just yeah. Say no, that. I I agree. Anything yeah. can be it's, successful if you put the right amount of focus and effort into it. Um, certain avenues require more of the owner than others, and you can't get the level of support you need. And then you just have to evaluate your time in a day and figure out what means more to you: being on social media, on camera, all of the time. You know, creating that engagement. For, for me personally, uh, that's just not where I, where I sit. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. mean, and the thing is, I think that in this day and age, we are in an industry that sort of is going to go to Instagram to find you. Yep. You know, they're going to look at your website and Instagram. So I think it makes sense for, you know, almost every some person in the home decor industry to have an Instagram. But like even my platform, I am the one who's going to talk to you. If you DM me, you know, I, I, I'm the one who's going to answer it. I mean, there's a rare occasion when I'm out of pocket and my team will say, Hey, this isn't Luann, but if someone's answering you, it's me, unless they say it's not me. Right. And on the comments, it's me, but am I figuring out the post, the graphic, like I make a video and I just leave it there and then they post it and put the captions. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, what do I need to do? I need to be the human behind it, but do I need to be the brain on? I swear to God, I I, I had a I went on an Instagram rant like a, I don't know by the time this airs probably a month and a half ago, because I don't do my own posting, right? I come in every day, two or three times a day, and look at the comments and talk and blah 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 and have a good time with all my friends, right? But this one day I was like, you know, this is crazy. Don't trouble them with this post just do it didn't I like do it wrong it went in didn't go in stories and I, I didn't even know how to get it from one place to another and I had a typo in it and I was just like would be me. you know what <laughs> stay I literally then I went live and I was like okay I'm just my <laughs> and this is why I don't typically do this. Yeah. One exactly. thing, another thing that we hear a lot or I hear a lot with designers who have delegated social media in the past is it doesn't sound like me. They were saying stuff that just like, I would never in a million, See, don't say I'm going to delight your senses. What are you talking about? Yes. Um, and so one thing that is very important to me and that I, I see as one of my strengths personally is that level of care and attention put Put to your brand. And I, I said yeah. that again, when it comes down to onboarding, before I ever want to work with you on anything, I want to understand who you want to be, how you want to represent your business and mm -hmm. match that. So going back to what Shayna said, you know, our team becomes your team. I'm not writing my way. For right. your business. Um, no, because that's ridiculous. Cause, right. yeah, yeah, because that would not be successful. Um, yeah. But that is another thing that also, as I train the marketing assistants, too is so so important to me um that it does yeah. feel authentic because i know it's important it's to the business because, owner as well it's funny because i've had people push back and say oh because like i we use um hamilton creatives for our social right and stephanie and her team are outstanding and she's got a lot quite a few interior designers and window treatment professionals that she does their marketing their their social media and stuff and 
you know, I have had people say to me, well, I don't know, somebody couldn't really sound like me. And I was like, did you write every word on your website? Like, like, do you write every, like, like, yes, somebody like that. I, I, and I've, 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 one time I looked at somebody and I said, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like if somebody said, I want to hire you to design my house that I should say to them, but I mean, how could she design your house? Because she's not going to live in it. Like, yeah. how does she know really what right. your, your, your house should look like? It's like, come on. Like, yeah. like you know, yeah. these are professionals. Now, yeah. you, it's a lot of work on your part. I know what Stephanie and I go through. You know, I'm like ad nauseum boxering her so she can plus let's understand she's got a cheat sheet she can listen to me every darn day of the week you know understanding how I talk and how I think and how I act right but it's it is possible it is literally I've had people say to me oh somebody couldn't do my social that wouldn't be authentic that wouldn't be right, right. and I'd be like right just like somebody you should nobody should ever trust you to design their house because you're not gonna live in every house you design right right and then usually you get the look like oh yeah, that's right. That's such a good point. I pride point. myself on understanding my clients' needs for their home, but I can't do that for their social. You're right. right. What am I thinking? That's such a good point. Yeah. <laughs> because, and you know, the house is 10 times more personal than yeah. your social. Yeah, that is much more intimate, I would say. You're right. Um, really quick, while we're still on kind of the marketing team, just because we did put so much time talking about social media, that's not at all all that we can all the do things, for you. Right. Um, and we really think about marketing in kind of two buckets, you know, there's the ongoing marketing efforts, social media, your email newsletter, your blog, the things that you're consistently doing, but there's also your marketing foundation, the systems that you hopefully get in place first, or that we can get in place maybe in the middle of your journey, um, your website, your search engine optimization, of course, automated journeys, your customer experience, your welcome packet are these things wow. you're sending manually right now because you don't have to be, there are so many great tools out there, um, so, you know, as you're thinking marketing in your head, yes, a lot of people go directly to what am I doing every day, but your marketing right. foundation is just as, if not more important. If Even oh, if it yeah, started working you. and leads started coming in day after day, are you prepared to take them on in a way that is systemized, branded, efficient, and hopefully not too much time on your plate until they've landed it? to you with a paid consultation or something yeah. like that. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So we have the high level division. Then we have the marketing division. Okay. These are areas we can hire for D for, for D biz to support our companies. Yep. What, what are the other divisions? Next would be, oh, sorry, you go Shay. That's okay. I can talk about design. You can go admin. Um, so um, what of our next support channels would be the design team, right? So a big avenue of business that really ebbs and flows, um, supporting drafting, supporting rendering, supporting those presentation boards, um, also so supporting procurement if need be. Um, and that's, you know, we all know how heavy that workflow can be when that project first kicks off, needing space planning or concept renderings um, or anything going on there. And then we can kind of have a lull during procurement. A lot of designers are running that and administrators are keeping them organized. Um, but then it can go heavy again, where you're creating your furniture schedules, getting your ff &E together if you're at that stage of the game, um, doing those realistic renderings once your actual products are rendered. Um, so that's where our design team specializes in. Um, we basically say that we have in-house licenses that we purchase. So CAD, SketchUp, V-Ray, Chief Architect, um, we own those licenses. We're very collaborative. The point is that we are making things as easy as possible. So we are file sharing. Um, a lot of designers sometimes get stressed where they're like, you know, we have two different types of designers. Either someone who doesn't have the skill set to maybe be in those um, technologies and those who do have the proficiency to be in there and they get a little bit of stressed out. Like that's my creative process. How am I supposed to let that go? You're not letting it go. You're getting it there to 80% and then you can tap in and do the final 20% zhuzh, right? You're also mm -hmm. providing as much direction as you want. And I talk to people about this who are maybe hand drafting. We have some designers who were still in the hand drafting game and that's very tedious um, and time consuming, but my girls crack up when I delegate. It could be on the back of a freaking paper towel and it's in like <laughs> magic marker and it's just X's and O's and giving them the foundations of the measurements that they need. 
less than two minutes. I take a picture on my phone. I'm like, here you go. Get this going. Um, And so that's what we kind of talk about. You're not losing your creative process. You're just creating and painting the foundation for a team to take on the meat and potatoes. And if you don't have that kind of technical skill, that's okay. Just factor in a little bit more of that back and forth and revision time. So that you can just say, hey, I want to move the, the sofa here or put an extra end table there. Um, but that's, you know, the core of our design team of where they are providing support. And really quickly, just because you mentioned those licenses that we do have, that doesn't mean that those are the only technologies that we're we're willing to work within. So a lot of designers say, well, I like Foyer, I have Kahoom, or I do it this way. I do my mood boards and design files. Certainly we have put our team together like little puzzle pieces to have all of the strengths and all of the technological proficiencies. We We simply can't purchase every license that exists out there. So you share your login with us and we'll work within the systems that you already have in place if you're not Perfect. looking to expand beyond that. Love it. I love it. So basically pretty much anything we can think of over on the design thing, just ask and you probably will say, yes, you could do this. I don't think yep. we've said no to a task before. Yeah. Love I it. think it's I mostly it. just setting a clear expectation. Like, yes, we're highly proficient. This will start off very quickly or actually we're not integrated into that technology yet. Um, So there would be more of that one-to-one training period where we're selecting a designer on the team to be the first to kind of pioneer with them. And so that first initial task flow might look a little longer um, initially and then gain gain speed with more efficiency. So for me, um, in that onboarding process, it's all about expectation. The same thing I coach with clients and selling projects. We always just want to be very clear on where we're at and what we can do. And if we're falling short somewhere, what it's going to take to get us to where we need to be. And just to be clear, you were referring to the designer having less knowledge. That slows the process and having the expectation for us, the ones who are hiring you. If I'm not proficient in these different things, you'll work with us in my company so that we can develop the ability to work quickly with you in those things. Okay. Exactly. And Making vice sure. versa. You know, someone comes to our admin team who's proficient in, you know, all these different technologies, but they say, I'm working with something we've never heard before. I can't even think of one we haven't heard of at this point, but you know, we're always going to be honest. Well, we actually don't have any clients that work with that right now. There's going to be a little bit more training needed for us to provide the absolute best level of service for you. It's not a no, it's just a, we're going to be working together. Um, yeah, just the full level of transparency there. Yeah. Yeah. But it mostly happens the other way is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. It mostly happens <laughs> yeah. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then the fourth uh, team is admin. admin. So what, what are we doing on admin? What can we have you do for us on admin? Great question. And there's really no limit there. I mean, I, Shayna had our admin team pay her parking tickets at one point when she was still in New York City. (laughs) Sorry to put you on blast. Um, But mostly, these are the systematic administrative systems within your business. Uh, Very popular things becoming, um, you know, pulling the time logs each week, uh, comparing that to the retainer, reaching out to clients with weekly updates, vendor communication, order tracking, order placement. I mean, the list goes on of all the things that go into a really well-run administrative system. Um, And Shana is so great too on that fractional COO side of helping find the gaps in the system so that we can train our team to fill them. So I do think that's a really good collaboration often between business operations trickling down to the administrative team, which is why Shana is on every single administrative onboarding because she knows the questions to ask. Mm. Yeah. I'd say administratively is the only one division where there's a consistent level of support. There is an ongoing foundation of practices that happen daily, weekly, and then you have this sprinkling that will occur when those orders come in or when an installation is occurring. So uh, synonymous uh, could be project management. You know, oftentimes people are like, oh, what about project management? From a virtual perspective, that's what your administrator is. I also call them the personal trainers of the business because let's be honest, what owner really tracks their time and inputs their time locks? (laughs) Not me. (laughs) Um, So, you know, that's one of those daily practices 
versus making sure, you know, it's either a quick phone call, a quick Slack, making sure that they're collecting that data and that billable time is being collected. So while there can be a small baseline of, um, you know, commitment to the business, the profitability that those admins actually provide to the business. I mean, I can't exactly quantify it, but I know for myself, I probably wasn't tracking about two thirds of my time um, and just kind of flying by the wayside and having someone every single day collect that, communicate with the client, take away things that gave me anxiety, like having to collect more money and replenish the retainer and passing those things off, um, are everything. And they also, again, they provide this weird psychological thing to clients. When you have a team of employees, all of a sudden the negotiation stops, right? No one's going to say, oh, can you bring your $150 hour rate down to a hundred to meet my budget? Mm, Never going to happen because now they know you have employees, payroll, insurance, all the things. doesn't matter how it's actually set up, whether you're only paying seven hours a week for support, they don't need to know that. Um, And it's not going to be presented in that fashion. Um, So things close stronger, they close faster, um, and without without much question. Yeah, and I'd love to add in terms of that personal trainer for the business, because I know Luann, you know, when we first started talking before we were recording, you said, so is this just virtual assistants, basically. Um, And I think what really differentiates, well, there are so many things. We have a custom technology that manages all of the, uh, there are so many things that make it different than just a virtual assistant. But one of the main ones being when I think of a virtual assistant, I think of someone that I'm delegating to, I'm checking in on, I'm managing, did this get done? Reminder about this deadline versus what we take so seriously with our team is that we are the ones checking in on you. Hey, I know that client meeting is tomorrow. Do you have this? Is this ready? Do you need us to take this for you? Um, That personal trainer for the business that is not someone you're micromanaging, but is really truly integrated and and providing relief. I love that. You know, I love that. I have three VAs and I love my VAs. I'm like madly in love with them. Okay. (laughs) But I, that's a very clear distinction and I get it right. Like, um, depending on the level of the VA and how long they're with you and also the way you groom them and train them in your business, it can strictly be a delegation task, Mm -hmm. a delegation um, dynamic. I mean to say I have, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's, it's a thing. It's like, I get it. I can see um, this is to your point. It's whether it's COO or CMO or project management or design team, it is that the proactive is the key word there. It's um, mm-hmm. really is fractional employees. Right. Yeah. Really, employees. Really I was just going to say, that's really the word you want to use employees yeah. because there yeah. is a difference yeah. when you hear kind of virtual assistant um, with other types of virtual assistant teams out there in ways that you can tap in. But this is a fractional employee team. You get your employees, they're trained in your way. If you don't have best practices, I'm going to be there to implement best practices. Um, I'm not there to change your ways. You know, we're just, um, we're just there to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you and solve around what's not working, not come in and change and say, this is the one right way that you should be running this business. No, if, if that was the case, we'd all be achieving great success, you know, and it'd be very hard to hire someone. We're in there to figure out how to make that designer shine. Um, because if they're looking good and they're closing more business, then we're also going to grow as a team with them. So it's mutually gained success. Um, so their mm-hmm. success is our success. And we've seen that a lot with designers when they come in um, and work with us. And it's such a proud moment, especially for me, you know, where we have this one designer who would have closed down her business and now she's crushing it. Mm-hmm. She has so much confidence. She has the right people around her. Um, and it's really just amazing to see, you know, she's got 30 hours going on recurring each week. She's buying a ton of one-time hours. She's like, I think we should up the annual contract. I'm like, Hannah, let's just, let's just wait and see how the next three months goes. But she's averaging 50 hours a week right now. And she's like, no, I'm going to keep this consistency up. Like I'm telling you, I'm like, awesome. Like I'm here for it. Let's do it. Um, so it's just so good to see that growth and, and 
have someone refine their passion. And sometimes I find that as well. The business can suck the soul out of you if you are overworked, if you are not Mm -hmm getting the money that you deserve and you are just putting in endless hours and it you're not feeling it in your bank account. It's like the yeah. easy marker that you should see is logging into your bank account and feeling your success. There's not yeah. much data tracking other than <laughs> log in and take a peek, right? And if that's, that's not happening, it's understandable why you're not feeling the passion that you once did when you started the business. Um, so yeah, we're yeah, here no. to help fix that. I love all that. I mean, the thing is, we know for a fact that literally every hire theoretically should make you money. Yeah. And there is nothing, you know, having been in business for decades and come from, you know, the type, the way business was from, you know, the dawn of time here, you know, at Window Works in the 80s, you know, every employee was a, an employee with eyeballs in your space. Like it just, you know, virtual employees were just not a thing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, at, my business now at Luann Nigara Inc., I was talking to somebody the other day and I'm like, I'm up to 15 employees here, awesome. but only one is full time on my payroll. The other 14 are a combination of VAs, consultants, whatever it is. But, you know, it's not like, well, maybe this month they won't need you. It's like, no, 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 no. Every one of them is like, quote unquote, on my payroll, right? Um, but the thing about it is, to your point, and the reason why I'm sure 4D Biz is so successful is I'm going out and I'm getting the person who does this skill. <laughs> like, like I have one employee 20 hours a week that all he does is video. Like, that's it. We don't ask him to do another thing. Just take our stupid videos and edit them into sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's like, instead of like, it used to be, I would look at like Diana, my marketing coordinator, I'd be like, can you take that face off at the beginning? And when I messed up and she could do it, but I mean, that's not her best use of time. Right. And so this, this new way of doing business is I'm all about it because every single person that works for me has a skill set and an expertise that has been identified as their superpower. There's some crossing here and there when like, you know, the whole team has to pull together and get something done maybe, but I would tell you 90% of the time, you know, everybody's in their lane and they're doing their thing. And it's, um, as a business owner, the plus is I come to 4D biz, everybody's instantly trained. I'm not like, you know, oh, well, let me teach you how to do procurement or let me teach you how to do client status emails. It's like, no, this is a way that we've done it in the past for other people. You want to do it this way for you? Okay. No, you want us to do it that way? Great. The other thing I like about it is the flexibility part to your point, Evelyn, when you said fractional think of flexible, it's Look, you get attached to people, but they aren't on your payroll. They have income coming from other places. And if you need to back down with the ebb and flow of your business, you just do it. You know what I mean? And so whereas at Window Works, like we've got four or five exterior installers. When it pours rain, you know what it costs us on a rainy day? Like there's like, we're, like we're just like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're not fractional installers. <laughs> exactly. And I you know what I mean? that one other piece of it, that one other unique part of the fractional model as a whole is that maybe you only need an administrator first. As right. your needs evolved, you're not, you're not back on Indeed. I mean, hiring takes forever. We know because we're doing it for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, hiring right, right. is really tough. Right. Uh, the right person, turnover, interviewing, sorting through, ugh, you get it. Um, it's like and you're months. not, yeah, you're four not doing process. that because now you need design. You're like, well, I have yes. a team that I trust. Uh, my operations officer is going to help me pick the designer that's going to suit the needs that I have, you know, and it's just really meant to take all of that headache because it can be a headache um, off your plate. Yeah. And I, I like it. what you said, Luann, like every single, and I tell this to the designers all the time, every single person should be profiting your business. I'm super yeah. visual. I'm like, it should be the video game or like the dollar signs floating over their head. And like when they're working, <laughs> they're just jumping and you're collecting money. You know, that's how you go from 150 an hour to 350 an hour, because you have two people jumping and you're collecting money right. and you don't right. have to increase your fees to collect more money. Your prof, your product sales 
are your bonus. That's totally right. separate. That shouldn't be what's the foundation of your operations. And just like you, I have that mixed bag. We have employees on salary and we have hourly individuals. And, you know, salary is tough. You know, you got your paid mm-hmm. holidays, your PTO, every, you know, you Taxes, have to keep them. Yeah. You, <laughs> the workman's comp screwed up on yep. that one. Got a $50,000 fine once. Um, yikes. yikes is right. Oh. Um, and so it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to maintain and sometimes they're not doing billable work, you know, because you have to just fill their capacity in some way. And so it is, sometimes they're all looking at you while it's pouring rain. Exactly. (laughs) You know, and you're singing kumbaya. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, so the fractional model is fantastic. I always say 40 biz should profit your company. Shouldn't be an investment. There should be no stress to purchasing of services. You should be comfortably making somewhere. And I know everyone all over the world is charging kind of different rates, but on a minimal basis, you should be profiting $50 an hour. On an average yeah. basis, designers are profiting $100 an hour. And for those designers, of course, that are charging $195 to $200, they're profiting $150 plus off of the hour. So if you're selling correctly and your contract is sold appropriately and your time logs are being actually tracked and submitted to the client, then, you know, this fractional avenue is a hundred percent profit to your business. Yeah. hundred percent. Love it. Anything that I didn't ask you or that we left out because I think this was outstanding. Okay, Luann, there's actually one more thing I would love to add. Um, So if you go to 40biz.com, you can actually register for a free account to access our technology. There are some free tools that we built inside of that um, that you can use as a business owner either before you're ready to tap into needing that human support or just to kind of start laying your foundation. Um, those tools, what they look like are creating client folders and getting your client notes, images, floor plans organized, creating to-do lists where you can also put in estimated time allocations per uh, to-do add those to your calendar or delegate them to our team. You can also track your time live as a designer or put in those manual time logs as we talked about. Let's be honest, who's actually on a time log. Um, And another awesome feature that we just developed and launched is our retainer management feature. So when you're selling your project um, and whatever price it is, you're converting that into that maximum amount of time. You're able to input that into the retainer. And as you are tracking time, or as you are delegating in our team is tracking time, that retainer is going to track back live. It's also going to fire you an automatic email when that client has five hours or less in their retainer to remind you that you need to replenish that agreement with them. So just helping you stay in control of the money and making sure you truly are profitable. Okay. So let me just clarify. So this is This is a free membership portal that any designer listening can go, and it has resources. It does not have humans. It has all of these resources. Access it. Figure it out yourself. It either makes sense or it doesn't. I'm sure most of it does. It's not that I'm implying that it's confusing. But the point is, there's no humans at the end of this. It's free. Use the resources. Well, there are humans, right? So this is also how you will tap into our team. So inside of that portal as well, when you're delegating tasks to our team, this is where you'll be communicating with your virtual assistants, where you will be seeing those live time logs per task, um, where you're able to mark specific tasks as billable to particular clients. So it's automatically dumping those time logs in your client's billable time log folder. So this is a cohesive technology, almost thought to be like your virtual office where you can control your employees. So the free tools are there as a foundation to keep you in control of what you need to execute and in control of the money and the retainer agreements for your projects. But it's also your control center when you're delegating to these fractional employees and keeping you in control so you know where the heck your time is going to who's working on it and what's gotten done. 
but that's when I cross over into contract with you, right? In other words, you're just saying it's one spot, but I can access free stuff and not be in contract with you. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. There is one element of your free account that still gets you some human interaction, which would be our free events. Um, at least ah. once a month, we have some kind of educational webinar. Um, we really want it to be a positive community of like-minded industry professionals. Come, we'll share with you what What's working for us, um, the things that we're seeing that are successful. There's usually some level of, you know, topic that we're going through, but then you, you know, you also get to meet the other designers and, and share, ask questions. And that is available to you as a free member of 40 biz. So you're still getting some FaceTime with Shayna or with myself if needed. Love it. I love it. All right. So good. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. It was interesting to get to know you and to get to know this business model. It's obviously, I think, a resource that's going to be very popular in the industry. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks so much, Luann. Thank you so much for having us, Luann. Now, I am going to tell you, before I actually had the conversation with Evelyn and Shana, I realized it didn't, I didn't quite get their business model. I actually thought that what they were was providing a capable team of virtual assistants, like a myriad of virtual assistants. You can hire one, you can hire two, whatever it is, with all different talents that cater to any business, any type of model, whether you are a window treatment store, an interior designer, or you know a dentist, and you needed a virtual assistant, okay? And by the way, that's valuable. I have three virtual assistants, and I adore every single one of them. But soon, I started to see it clearly. 4D Biz is an entire virtual company that you're essentially able to bring in as your own team, complete with strategy, from strategy to integration, okay? They're basically there to proactively support you in whatever you need. See, that's the big difference proactively support you. So they're coming in and doing that top level look as opposed to coming in and say, tell me what to do today, boss, right? Which is valuable. We need to be able to tell people what to do, but this is a different twist. And I think it's really interesting. So whether you are, you know, trying to figure out where, what your marketing should look like, what your messaging should be, what, you know, your project, you know, process should be, they're able to come in, step in, and provide solid expertise based on what they've done for other interior design firms, okay? So um, I think that this level of indiv individualization is what makes Evelyn and Shana and what they're doing very special. I think so often we don't really know exactly what it is we need until we accidentally go in the wrong direction. We hire the wrong person, like Shana explained that she did in her own business, or we put all of our focus in the wrong area or we spend money and energy and time on boarding, um, you know, more time and energy that we need to because we don't really have defined processes. OK, and therefore we're we're, you know, running in a circle of ourselves. And then we have a new employee and now we're all running in a circle. That's no fun. OK, um, so but when you have this already created efficient team that has specifically interior design business running experience. That's, that's pretty something. That's something else, isn't it? That saves a lot of headache. Um, it's unique to be providing all of these pillars for any business, and these pillars do cover all the bases. I love how they actually mention that when you do utilize them for design support, you're not handing it over. You know, it still can be 80% your creative vision and their 20% assistance, whatever mix works for you. All right. I think about how much time and effort it takes to build a good solid team. I mean, for many years between Window Works and Exciting Windows and Luann Nigara Inc., you know, we've done this over and over. And I'm going to tell you what, we've made mistakes and we've pivoted and we've, we've learned by working with either and both Eileen Hahn and Jessica Harling, we've learned how to streamline our hiring and onboarding and to create SOPs that make the process that much better. But I wonder if one day back in the day, I could have just hired an expert built in team early on. Makes me think, right? 
This world of business has changed a lot. There was a time when I couldn't have imagined having employees over all different time zones handling all different facets of the business. But now I can hardly imagine without it. And I think that 4D Biz has this fractional employee concept, you know, down pretty well. And um, it kind of embodies the best of all worlds of virtual teams and in-person teams and all the things. Okay. Um, if you know that you have multiple needs in your business and you're ready to outsource, but not sure where to start, or if already made some hiring and outsourcing mistakes like Shana did once, I encourage you to reach out to 4D Biz and talk to them about what your business needs and see if they can help you. All right. So thanks so much to Evelyn and Shana for such a fun conversation. And thank you for showing up and listening. If you're listening in real time, in another week and a half, we're going to be together in Orlando, Florida at Luann Live, and I cannot wait. There are, um, I think, just uh, four or five VIP tickets left at this point. Not sure. There are general admission tickets left. If you're interested and you want to join us, please go to LuannLive.com and get your ticket. Thanks so much for joining me today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.